eventually available there as well. Um, and um, I hope that people look at it and buy it and enjoy it. Um, and the books are also, I think your book as well, oh, is here yeah. at the library. Right. So yeah. if you want to check it out and... Um, Thank you, Maggie, because uh, you mentioned it, I forgot to. Um, the book is here in this library, in the Byfield Library. Um, it is available at um, Scala's Art Center here in town. It is available at uh, Jeff Borgini's Ice Cream Shop, um, 10 Boards, down uh, next to Newman Floors. It's carried in Jabberwocky as well, although I haven't been over there to check their inventory. Um, and if you're ever down in Boulder, Colorado, it's available in the Boulder bookstore too, but um, I wouldn't make a special trip for it. If you swing by Michigan, mine's up in Michigan. Yeah, <laughs> just, just worldwide. Just worldwide. Yeah. 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 Dot to dot. Yeah. So, does anybody in the audience have any questions? I do. Um, when you're writing, what do you kids do? Do, you mean, do they help me with the book? Yes. Or? They, um, yeah, with this book, because I have been telling the story for so long, they, along the way and through the years, children have made recommendations, my kids especially. With this book specifically, it was a lot of fun because they were very involved with the illustrations um, and wanted to make sure that, um, for example, in the last page, I'm still catching grief for this, um, Eno is apparently wearing too much lipstick. So I've been told in the next book to make sure that the lipstick gets put away for Kino, <laughs> and he should not be doing that. Um, uh, the next book that's coming out, again, they've helped me with um, in terms of listening to the story and giving me input. Um, my husband um, is a great editor, although he's not my official editor, but he's great at reading through things. Um, but in the third book, um, they've told me what they want the story to be about. So um, they would like to incorporate some of their friends into the story. So Kino and Ernest, and we haven't quite figured it all out yet, but Kino and Ernest are going to go somewhere, a camp or vacation or something, and they're going to meet animals from around the world um, that have the same names as some of their friends. And they would also like, my children would like to be in the book. So you will meet Dylan the Dingo Dog and Luke the Leopard in the third book. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, my children and my wife uh, the final, have the final say on, on the book. And everything that gets published has to be approved by them. They have pretty high standards too. So, uh, why the book has turned out as well as it had. Um, there probably won't be a sequel, although both of my daughters have suggested they want to have a book about how the children win the lottery. Um, they just want to win the lottery first. <laughs> but anyway, um, <clears throat> they were very helpful. Um, they, the children are the joy of my life as your children are to you, I'm, I'm sure. Um, Mary once described herself as a, uh, an author's widow because I spend so much time at my computer writing. <laughs> she thinks I'm ignoring her. Um, I just never hear her. <laughs> but at any rate, um, without my family, and I mean that both literally and, of course, I mean that from my heart, the book would never have come into, into being. It is about my family, and it is by my family. Yeah. And I think without family, for any yeah. artist, be it author or otherwise, you can't do this without the support yeah. of your family, because it is a bit of a wild and crazy <laughs> whirlwind <laughs> experience. And it consumes an awful lot of time and energy. Yeah. And um, we are limited creatures only a certain amount we can do with a certain amount of time. And um, I don't regret, and I hope my family doesn't regret that I spent time doing the book. Um, but it was time I could have been doing other things with. Um, 
I know my daughters are sitting there saying, yeah, he would have been sitting in front of the TV criticizing the TV shows, but glad he worked on the TV. Because <laughs> heads are shaking. <laughs> but, um, but that's the truth. Um, it's, it's not without a cost. It may be well worth the cost, well worth the investment, but make no mistake about it, to put a book together, and Terry will back me up on this one all the way, is an enormous amount of effort. This, my book is not as, as got as many words as, <laughs> as uh, um, Maggie's does. You know, there's probably a couple hundred words at the most in it. I haven't ever counted them. But, you know, if I count the time that I spent on this book, it's probably like an hour or two hours a word that the amount of time I went into the book. Now, that's why I was afraid to write a novel, you know. I mean, you got 80,000 words, and wait a minute, let me do the math on that. You know, <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, and, and without my family, it's, it would not have, have happened. Thank you, thank you. Is there any other questions? Mm -hmm. You want to get up? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Um, and I want to thank the rest of the friends for having us here again as the local authors night. And we're doing it in this beautiful room with Mary Paganelli's art hanging on the walls, which is special. And I appreciate that too. So I'm Terry Polardi for the Friends of the Library with Paul Jansen and Maggie Van Galen and the audience. Thank you very much. Okay.